Well, um, th there's, there's a lot to get through here. Hi guys, Matt Duerto here. I've just seen the New Year's special of Doctor Who, Revolution of the Daleks. The highly anticipated episode of the year. We've got Doctors in Prison, the TARDIS team have to work without the Doctor, Daleks and Captain Jack are returning, and as well as the departure of Bradley Walsh and Thompson King as Graham and Ryan. There was a lot of stuff building up to this episode. Now before I talk about this episode, I might as well give like a brief summary of what I thought about the previous Dalek New Year's special, Resolution. I thought that special was good. Probably a lot better than everyone else was was talking about. I will admit the stuff with Ryan's dad I, I don't think needed to be fitted in with that story. Looking back, I do think it works well, not just as a Dalek story, but also as a sort of New Year's Resolution story. The best part of that episode, in my opinion, obviously, was the Dalek and how Chibnall brought the Daleks back in this new era of Doctor Who. The way he explored the Dalek mutant and how dangerous the mutant itself is as deadly as the machine that it travels in brilliantly well and explored in quite, in quite possibly a way I don't think we've ever seen before. Overall, I did enjoy that episode. So much so when I found out that the Daleks were going to come back for another New Year's special, I got even more excited because we've already seen how Chibnall handled with one Dalek and how he handled the Cybermen and the new master, how is he going to handle with a whole army of Daleks? I guess my reaction to this episode is kind of the same reaction I had to Resolution. The Dalek stuff is good, the character stuff needs a bit of work. It's good. It's very, very good. It's I can't say it's flawless, it's not flawless, but one thing I will say, I'll get off the bat, this episode is Fun. This was an action-packed blockbuster of an episode. If you are looking for something to cheer you up or get your spirits up or get yourself excited for a new year, this is the episode for you. If you want to see your favourite characters come up against the biggest alien threat of the entire show, this is the one for you. Out of the entirety of season 12, I would say this was the first time I've had so much fun now, I know I've said in my previous reviews that episodes like Spy 4 Part 1, uh, Fugitive of the Judoon, um, Horn of the Adelidate, all those sorts of Ascension Assignment, all that stuff I thought was fun, but none of them actually gave me chills. This was the first time in a long while where I actually had butterflies in my stomach from a Dalek episode of all things, which I don't think we've actually seen in a long while. Speaking of which, let's let's talk about let's talk about the Daleks as an action-packed Dalek adventure story. This episode works because you can tell every single person working on this production loved working with the Daleks. The way they are shot, the way they are portrayed, the way they are animated in visual effects, just everything with the Daleks was absolutely epic. I could not count how many times I've said wow whilst watching this episode. For, now for starters of how the Daleks in this episode actually came to be, I will say the opening of this episode I think worked perfectly. We get a brief recap of what happened in Resolution. We then see what happened to that Dalek casing that was destroyed, which then gets used by Robertson's company to to further develop them into a security protection protocol, which which I will say Taking the Daleks and turning them into some sort of security drones, brilliant idea. And it and it fits well into the current day. Obviously, if you've seen Power of the Daleks and you've seen Victor of the Daleks, you know the Daleks are going to attack. But the way they built up to their attack and and the way that they actually take down the human race, I was terrified. The production work around the Daleks is phenomenal. Not only do we have new Dalek designs for the for the security protocol drone, we also get the bronze Daleks back with, with a brand new Dalek ship 
interior and exterior. I felt like I was 10 years old watching those scenes again. There were a lot of great shots with the Daleks, from the drones standing outside Downing Street, they're attacking the streets, the two parties of Daleks fighting each other on the bridge with the TARDIS on top of the bridge, even down to my favourite shot of the episode, the Doctor and the TARDIS flying above London with a whole fleet of Daleks flying around and then flying inside the TARDIS. That is a brilliant image. And I want that on my wall. Oh, and as a side note, Classic Who fans might want to get their bingo cards ready. Because this episode is jam-packed with Dalek story references. From Parting of the Ways, Remembrance of the Daleks, Genesis of the Daleks, and Revolution of the Daleks. But like all the other fans, I'm still waiting for that Dalek Civil War story. Maybe that's what the studio was trying to go with the Daleks. All of our main cast are, are portrayed extremely well, from the Doctor having to make up for a TARDIS fam, as well as trying to move on after learning what she has learned in The Timeless Children. The stuff with the Doctor in prison, while short, I did like seeing how the Doctor managed to get on living in a prison cell okay, like, like having some sort of daily routine, getting to know some of the other alien prisoners, like giving a weeping angel a name, keeping tracks with the Priting. Speaking to herself in the prison cell, telling herself a story to go to sleep. That was cute. There was even a holographic Let's Keep Fit program in the Doctor's cell. That was pretty funny. Yeah, whenever the Doctor is on her own, she actually works a whole lot better than she does with actual people around her. While I would have liked to have seen the TARDIS team working alone explored a lot more before the Doctor came back, I will admit, Panions did really well. The TARDIS team's reaction to the Doctor's return, I thought that was a spot-on reaction. Yaz's clear love for the Doctor is being explored more, and I thought was hinted very well. Her working with Captain Jack, I think, were the highlights of this episode. I liked seeing Graham taking the mickey out of Robertson by now explaining things to him. And even Ryan was good in this episode. Sure, his accent got a little grating at times, but I did really care about his character after learning what he has been doing on Earth since the Doctor left him and how much he has probably changed since. Seriously, I cared more for Ryan in this episode than I ever did in the entirety of Series 12. But the scene stealer here is John Bowerman as Captain Jack Harkness. Sure, the explanation of how he knew about the lone Cyberman which then led to the Timeless Children isn't really fully explained, unless I missed a line somewhere, but I loved his scenes with the rest of the cast. It felt like I was watching the same character from, from the Russell T. Davis and Tortured era, and it's great to see John Bowman back on form again. And even if you were someone who hasn't seen the show when it first came out and this is like your first time watching it, you can still buy that this is a character who has had major experience with this sort of thing. His relationship with the Doctor was, so, was very cute, his team up with the TARDIS team I thought was handled very well. It made me kind of realise how much of a show-off Jack was. And that little gesture he gave to Graham, that gave me giggles. The rest of the cast, while not fully realised, are still portrayed pretty well. From the Theresa May rip-off or Leo the anxious assistant. But the standout to me was Chris North as Robinson. And I'm just going to say it. He is so much better here than he was in Arachnids in UK. Say what you want about Arachnids in the UK, you will have to admit, Chris North was selling that character very well there, and he does it again here. I did enjoy North's performance in that episode, but here, having this Trump allegory character come into a Dalek story fits like a glove. This is a guy who tries to exploit everything unnatural to his advantage, just to get into power. He, he, he discovers how much of his work has been tempered with, he worries about the bills. He sees an alien race attack his world, he goes to exploit them by giving them information just so that he can further develop his own business. Now some people might disagree with me, but I have to say, I did like how he gets no comeuppance at the end, which, now I will admit, that still kind of bugs me, but since this is a world where Every time, every time a Dalek-like design is then being used to the human race and no one seems to remember the Daleks attacking their world in the past, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let that slide. I am pretty sure that they are still setting him up to become president or become this big major villain in a future series. So yeah, is it great? 
clearly no. I would have to address my major problems with this episode. Because while I did enjoy this episode, and I think it's good, I don't think it's great. It's good, it's fun, I enjoyed it, but there are clearly flaws inside, which, which I did notice whilst watching this episode for the first time. Most of them have to do with the fact that, once again, this episode has a lot to juggle with. One nitpick I do have is that I think we needed the Doctor to be separate from the TARDIS fam for a while longer. Maybe meet each other halfway through. Instead of like 15 minutes of a 70 minute episode. Because by the time Captain Jack breaks the Doctor out of prison, I, I, I just got the feeling of... Well, what was even the point of that? But I do like how it fits well with the companions changing relationship with the Doctor and how it leads to Ryan and Graham's departure, but I'll get to that later. There are a couple of other nitpicks I noticed whilst watching this episode, like, like, how was there a Dalek remnant inside the casing? Didn't the Dalek mutant escape from that casing resolution, attached itself to Ryan's dad and then got burned to the sun? Or was there, like, bits and pieces of the Dalek still remaining in the casing when it exploded? How did this character know where to find this person to do this thing? Or or how did this person know where to go? Or how did they even get there? Good, good example, when one of the characters, Leo, gets controlled by the Dalek mutant, and it takes him to the cloning factory, which, by the way, it did not need to be set in Japan, because there is no way an intelligent Dalek mutant controlling a weak human being can get there in a matter of seconds or even minutes. You could just have it take place somewhere close to Robertson's business location. Maybe in a secret room or an underground basement inside Robertson's factory. It also makes sense of why Yaz and Jack would want to go to that area. Some of the characters are kind of underused. Like I said, Leo was kind of underused before he even got controlled. The Prime Minister was just there to set up the Dalek. And yeah, even Captain Jack can at times be completely pointless to include. But like I said earlier in this review, that's not to say the actors didn't do a good job. They actually sold their roles very well. The biggest issue is what this episode was building up to, and that is Graham and Ryan's departure. I don't think this episode gave either characters anything to do to make their departure worth it. Sure, we got that nice scene with the Doctor and Ryan in the TARDIS, but even then it felt like it was shoehorned in. Now, don't get me wrong, it works. It does work, but because this episode was already focusing on the Daleks and Captain Jack and the Doctor and Yaz, we don't actually get enough of Ryan and Graham together. Like, like that speech Jack gives to Yaz. It's a good speech and it does work in the whole episode, but A, it should have been told before the Doctor returns to the fam, and B, shouldn't it also be addressed to Ryan and Graham, therefore adding more impact to when they do leave at the end? However, despite all of what I've said, the actual departure scene is well done. While I didn't really feel anything for Ryan leaving since, I have to be honest, aside from series 11, I did not care much for him, I really did feel for Graham's departure. The reason he had to leave the TARDIS to go live his life with Ryan, I think, was the right choice. And I'm not gonna lie, I did tear up at this moment. I will admit I was kind of expecting one of them, or maybe both, to die this episode. Like, maybe Graham sacrificed his life to save Ryan, and then after that, Ryan decides to honor Graham's memory by staying on Earth. I'm glad that they didn't die, and honestly, the way they left this episode, I think, worked pretty well. That group huddle they did, that was a nice touch. I also did like how the episode ended with Graham trying to help Ryan ride the bike again. However, having Grace's Force Ghost, I think, appear at the end, I thought was unnecessary. And kind of laughable. I also would have liked it if they hinted that they were going to do more work on Earth with the psychic papers. Maybe have them both open the envelopes, spot the psychic paper, then give a knowingly wink at each other. Rather than giving out exposition of other problems that are currently happening around the world. So, those are my thoughts. What did I think overall? Despite my criticism earlier, Revolution of the Daleks is still a fun episode to kick off the new year. While I also think Resolution had problems with two stories happening at the same time, in comparison with this one, I do think Resolution was put together better than this one. This one, I think it could have been bigger. But I wasn't disappointed, in fact, it gave me exactly what I thought we were going to get. 
It gave us Dalek action. It gave us the TARDIS team back together. It, it gave us the characters we wanted to see return to our screens again. So I wouldn't consider this a waste of time. Far from it, I, I, I actually do recommend it. As a Dalek action story, it works. As a character-driven send-off episode for our companions, it definitely needed a bit more work. I'm going to give Revolution of the Daleks 7 out of 10. Oh, and BBC, that little stunt you put at the end of the credits? Good job keeping that reveal a secret. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and a Happy New Year to everyone! Be sure to leave a comment, like, and share this video, and if you have seen this special, what did you guys think of it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it works well, or do you think it needed a bit more improvement? And if you'd like to see more of my content on this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.